Engineering has a broad range of skill sets that you need to learn and it can take you many places. And as junior engineers, we can be in too much of a rush to get to where we need to go. Engineering is really a marathon and you don't need to be in a rush to get to that final destination. And I'll be going through some tips that I'll give you to help you with your career, especially early on. These are some of the things that I've picked up from my experience in my last 15 years being an engineer. As I was saying, engineering is a marathon, not a sprint race. There's a really broad skill set that you need to be a solid engineer. And it's not just looking at those fancy software. So yes, you do want to run those ETABS models, it's fun. Build those strand models, play with the structural mechanics. You also want to make sure that you're doing your smaller jobs, your bigger jobs. You find out quite often those smaller jobs, you learn quite a lot. The skill sets of how to talk to clients, how to put together an effective package. Those small jobs may have some key problems that you need to solve that you wouldn't get in those bigger projects. Yes, it's always good to be designing the biggest, best buildings. You always want to go to the high-rise buildings. Cher cherish those smaller jobs where you can actually run them and take hold and actually deliver a good project. And that's similar with your positions as you're going up. So as a graduate, you want to go to that project engineer and that's a good goal to have. However, don't be in a race to get there as soon as possible. Looking at what skill sets you can do to get there and making sure you're keeping track of what skills you have and what you need to work on. That yes, the employer or your manager is there to help you, but it's really your responsibility to take hold of your career and work out where you want to go. So when you're building up those experiences, making sure that you're cataloging what you've actually worked on, what projects you've worked on, and what skill sets you've actually built up to see where you may have holes. And this is where you can go to your manager and say, these are the areas that I need to work on. I haven't got much experience in timber, steel, or concrete, whatever it may be. And saying, I wanna try and work on more projects that have these type of products. So you can build the experiences that you need with those elements. And smaller projects, as I was saying, potentially may allow you to run that project from start to finish. So you can deal with the clients, the architects, and put together a package as a whole, as opposed to just designing one element. So yes, you want to be designing those high-rise buildings as it looks fancy. However, don't shy away from those smaller projects as quite often you get a more hands-on approach and dealing with the clients one-on-one. -on -one. And don't be afraid to step outside your comfort zone as the only way to learn is to push your boundaries. And with doing that, stepping outside your comfort zone, you will learn a lot more. But be confident in that the team that you have around you and if you do need your job checked, hand it off to those managers that can check it for you. And when you're pushing yourself, you gotta realize mistakes will happen. Now, no one likes it and you will be embarrassed, especially when you need to go to your manager and say, look, I've made a mistake. When you're pushing yourself and pushing for those harder projects, it's more and more likely that you will make a mistake. Just making sure that you pick up on it before it's too late. And when you find that you've made a mistake, do not try and hide it. That's probably the worst thing you can possibly do. And this is something that especially I try and instill to anyone that I work with. Yes, if you make a mistake, I won't be happy. However, I am there for you and I will help you out. I'll be there to try and solve it. And if you come to me, you come to me with a problem and say, look, I've made a mistake. I think I'm stuffed up here. Come with the knowledge that you've had, what you've tried to do to address it. Don't just come, I've made a mistake potentially come with a potential solution that you may have, open up to your manager and say, this is what I've done, this is what we need to fix. As trying to hide it will make it inevitably worse. And when you do make that mistake, it may mean that you need to work overtime to solve the solution, to get the project back onto track and to solve whatever problem you may have created. Be there to also step up to solve that problem and note that yourself about where you made that mistake so you do not make it into the future. And when talking about mistakes as well, the biggest time and the most time you're going to learn about engineering, about what you're made of, about how to design buildings, is when errors have been made. I know this is somewhat counterintuitive and you never want to make mistakes and you want to try and avoid it at all costs. However, when you need to solve unique solutions, to solve problems that you've had either by yourself or by other colleagues, you will learn more than you will ever imagine 
And people always freak out and they go, oh no, I don't want to be dealing with projects like that. But try and put your hand out for those harder projects. And you'll find in the end, you'll be a better engineer, making your other designs so much easier and learning a lot in the process. And when we're thinking about our career progressions and our career goals, it's about looking at what's actually motivating us. What are we trying to get out of our career? Yes, we all want higher salaries. Yes, we all want that next promotion. And quite often we're looking over the fence and the grass always looks green at a different company. That may not always be the case. We find quite often that different companies, yes, some have better cultures, some have worse cultures. So you need to be really critical on where you're going and doing your research before you move on. Because quite often a company, if it does have good culture, it's more likely to retain its staff as well. So if you're just going for pay, you will find that if you do move to another company that does have better pay, but doesn't have that culture, you will be miserable. And really, and this is something I want to express to everyone, money is not everything. I know you hear from a lot of people, do what you love, but this is truly the best advice I can give you. If you are at a company with great culture and you enjoy the people that you're working with, second guess trying to move on. Now, this is a two-edged sword because sometimes I will recommend that people do jump companies a couple of times, but don't do it solely for that next pay rise. As good culture will mean that you'll potentially work harder, you'll be happier and more likely to go for that next position and get those promotions as well. As you never become rich working for someone. However, if you work hard, you save your money and invest it, that's how people become rich. Not just working for themselves, but getting their money to work with others. Now, when you are looking, do I need to move or not? Asking yourself a series of questions. Am I getting the experience that I need to be a better engineer? Is the culture good or is that culture better in that other company? And doing your research on that other company to ensure that you're getting your goals that you need to. As there's early on in your career, yes, moving companies a couple of times may be good as you will get a different perspective on design and the design approaches and different experiences on even different ranges of projects. So you're working on retail, you're working on transport, you may be working on residential and all these experiences working on with different engineers and different managers will make you better overall. And when you find someone or a group of team that is better than you, work with them as you will learn quite a lot. Don't be afraid to work with people that are better than you. I encourage you to work with people that are always better than you wherever possible as they'll make you push for your career to be better. But another tip as well when you're moving companies is quite often when you hand in that resignation, you've probably had discussions with your manager about pay, pay rises or even promotions and there's been none forthcoming. And quite often when you hand that resignation, all of a sudden that position opens up, that pay rise suddenly becomes possible. Now that may be highly tempting. However, think about it. What did you need to do to encourage your manager to do that? You needed to quit your job. You needed to hand it in your resignation. And only when they realized that you were driven and you had conviction behind what you were saying is that they were able to offer you that position. And is that somewhere where you really want to be? Do you want to be quitting your job to be able to get to that next position or pay rise? As the next time it comes up, you potentially need to do the same thing. This is probably where you're looking at a company culture that needs to be fixed. When they do offer you that pay rise or that promotion after you've handed in your resignation, Think very carefully before accepting. And you want to also honor the position that you potentially got at the new company as well. As if you quite quickly brush it off, that's a really good way to burn bridges. And most engineering, especially in Australia, and I'm sure it's the same around the world, it's a really small industry as people talk a lot. So you don't want to burn the bridges that you've laid behind you. As in the future, you may want to go back to that company. As things may have changed, you may have got better, or you're looking for that next position. Or you may even be looking at a different company you're moving to. You've got similar managers that have remembered you from that old position. You also want to be a good colleague and work with the people that you're working with. And that means not always coming to people with problems. You want to be there trying to be driven there to solve people's problems. Give people passion for what they do. Be positive, be upbeat. Don't be that naysayer about what's happening. No one likes working with someone that's a naysayer that's always negative. No one likes someone that's coming to them with problems. Yes, you may have some issues here and there, 
but try and work it in a constructive way. Try and say, I've got a problem here. I've tried these type of things. I don't seem to find a solution. And then people are more likely to work with you. You can also open up and try and talk to your colleagues and try and solve some of their problems as well. As discussing problems and design ideas, you can come up with better solutions than you can by yourself. And if you're there to help other people out, they're more likely to help you out as well. So you'll be a better colleague, you'll have a better work environment and have a better team. You should always take responsibility for what you do as well. This is one of the biggest things. I find a lot of people will just say, oh, this is my part. I didn't look at the other areas. However, if you see something, say something. Far too often people say, oh, I was just designing columns. I was just designing the slabs. And I say, did you see that? Say, yeah, yes, I did. Then why didn't you say something? This may be something that someone else missed. It's a really a team event. And so you want to make sure if you're seeing something, say something. Engineering as a whole is not a solitary endeavor. You need a group of people around you to be successful. And with most careers, it is also not a smooth sailing event. You will have ups and you will have downs. And when you have your downs, you want to work around the people that are around you, trying to drive your passion back. Engineering as a whole, I think, is a great profession to have. Yes, we may get down about we don't get compensated fairly for what we do. However, think about what you actually achieve as an engineer, what you've built. You can say, this is the building that I've got out here. I put a lot of the design into this. And be proud of everything that you are doing and dealing with it ethically as well. And mistakes will happen. So learn and grow from them. And you'll be a better engineer for it. I hope you like this video. And if you did, hit that like button. And if you're interested in structural engineering and haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. And to get all updates, you need to ding the bell. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.